Thank you. And now, and now it's time to begin officially our conference. And as we do that, we want to read the rules so that those who are participating in this program for the first time, Form 3s and maybe some of our teachers who are not here last time can get to know the rules. As I read the rules, silence will be key. It's one of the rules, but let me start with that one. It will be very key, especially now that uh, we are, uh, the, the hall is full. So we need to be very, very, uh, we observe the rules and be very silent. Socratic Conference is an academic presentation that perfects the last stage of the Socratic method and Pareto principle rule. The mission of the Socratic conference is to make learners master the whole content. Rules. Socratic conference takes strictly two hours and 11 minutes. The first 15 minutes will be used by the Kedor moderators for conference orientation an official message from DSLP Examination Center. The next 45 minutes will be used by the Socratic 12 to speak content. 50 minutes will be used by the Socratic member room to ask questions. We are expecting all of us to ask them questions, including the Form 3s. We are expecting you to ask them so many questions. The last 6 minutes, 15 minutes will be used by teachers to make comments. The last six minutes will be used by Kador to give their final remarks. Rule number two, notes and textbooks are not allowed in the Socratic hall. Presenters and those asking questions must present or ask what has been mastered. No one is allowed to read questions from the textbooks or research for answers from, I mean, from notes. Silence is not just a rule, it is a law. Students must observe meditative silence throughout the conference. Students who make noise will be excluded from the conference and will not participate in any of the day's conference or even the week. Number four, communication is purely English, no sheng, except in Kiswahili, of course, when you can speak Kiswahili or other languages like German. The 12 members must nominate four to five members who will make actual presentation. The rest of the team will help in answering the questions. Presenters will not ask any question or seek clarification from any of the members or member room. All questions asked must be within the topics of the day any out-of-topic question will be rejected. Those who ask questions must have the answers for the questions they ask. If no one answers a particular question, the person who asked the question will provide an answer. Teachers are encouraged not to intervene or correct students when they make mistakes. The mistakes can be noted and corrected during uh, question time. However, if a teacher feels that an error presented demands immediate response, they can do so immediately. Rule number 11, students who ask, a student who asks a question must confirm whether the, the, whether the correct answer has been provided. They can do that in three ways. Number one, you can say, the, the, the answer provided is correct, or it is incorrect, or you are not satisfied. After the person has answered the question, then you may confirm that it's correct, or it is incorrect, or you are not satisfied with what has been provided. Students are expected to have mastered or understood the questions they are asking, uh, the demand of the questions that they ask. Students are highly encouraged to ask questions without reading. However, in some cases, especially in mathematics and chemistry or physics, learners may be allowed to read detailed or lengthy questions. Those are the rules of the Socratic Conference. Socratic Conference is not a competition or a contest. 
it is time to teach someone else something and to learn something from someone. Just like what the founder of Socratic Method, Socrates, says, the only thing I know is that I know nothing and I want even to know more. It is time for us to humble ourselves and seek to learn from someone else and present what we have and teach someone else so that all of us can benefit. Want to welcome all of you to this program. Thank you so much. Let us now have uh, the presenters to take the stage. Now welcome. Before you are the biology 12 um, Socratic team. Nutrition. Nutrition is a process by which living organisms acquire and utilize nutrients. There are different. There are do. Two different modes of nutrition, that is autotrophism and heterotrophism. Autotrophism is a mode of nutrition whereby living organisms make their own complex food substance using raw materials. The, auto, the living organisms are, the organisms are called autotrophs. The, another mode of nutrition is heterotrophism. Heterotrophism is a mode of nutrition whereby living organisms feed on already manufactured complex food substances, and the organisms are called heterotrophs. The process by which living organisms make their own food using energy from the light is called photosynthesis, and photosynthesis takes place in the leaf of a plant, which is adapted by having the following features, i.e. They, they are broad and flat to, to, they are broad and flat to absorb for exposed light surface area for absorption of light and carbon dioxide. They have stomata to which carbon dioxide from the atmosphere diffuse into the intercellular phase for photosynthesis. The epidermis and the cuticle are thin to al for transparency to allow light fo for photosynthesis. The, the, the chloroplast in the, in the leaf are essential because it is used for, it is where where photosynthesis takes place. It, it has double membrane, that's the outer membrane and the inner, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Internal, internally, the chloroplast has lamellae, which, which is uh, suspended by the aqueous matrix. At interfold, at some interfold, the lamellae, the lamellae form double, several membranes called the cranum, and it is suspended by the stroma, which has the enzyme. Now go to the process of photosynthesis. The process of photosynthesis takes place in the leaves of the of the plant, where it has chloroplasts containing chlorophyll for photosynthesis. The xylem vessels in the veins absorb water from the from the cell to the photosynthetic cells in the plant. The, intercell the intercellular space has carbon dioxide, which is diffused through the stomata for the process of photosynthesis. The process of photosynthesis takes place in two stages, that's the light stage and the dark stage. And the first stage is the light stage which takes place in the crana containing chloroplasts, which has chlorophyll contents for photosynthesis. The, chlo the, the chlorophyll absorbs light energy, which is used to split water molecules into hydrogen, oxygen, and adenosine triphosphate. Some of the oxygen which is formed is used to is released into the environment while others are used into the, during the process of respiration. The second stage of photosynthesis is the dark stage, which occurs in the stroma, in the stroma of the chloroplast. In here, carbon dioxide and hydrogen from the photolysis take, combine to form glucose. Some of the glucose form is used in respiration while others are converted into starch. Other products form in the in the, in the dark stage are adenosine type. Other process form in the, in, in the dark stage are glycerin and amino acids and fatty acids. Iran, we now go to the factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis. These are carbon dioxide concentration, water, temperature, and light intensity. Now go to the components components constituting in living organisms. These are carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Carbohydrates is the first one, and, and it is divided into three. That's monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides is the simplest carbon, carbon hydrates, carbohydrates, and examples are glucose, fructose, and saccharides. They dissolve in water to form, to, they dissolve in water and form sweet testing solution. The second one is 
disaccharides, disaccharides is formed by linking up two monosaccharides to form to form disaccharides and water. For example, glucose pl plus glucose to form maltose plus water. It's soluble in water and f form C testing solution. They are described in non reducing sugars because some such as glucose, some such as maltose uh, cannot be some such as glucose uh, cannot be able to reduce copper to, uh, to sulfate in Bennett's solution. Another one is polysaccharides. Polysaccharides is more complex carbohydrates. This form this form is in cellulose in plant cellulose in animals starch and glycogen in plants. Patterns of carbohydrates is that they are they are oxidized to release energy. We go now, we now go to the enzyme. Enzymes are you not know, the, the next living chemical of life is the protein. The protein is protein has the building blocks blocks of proteins are amino acids. They are amino acids. They are formed by linking up several amino acids to form the peptide molecule. And the bond between them is called the peptide, the peptide bond. Another chemical life is the lipids. The lipids constitute of fat and, fats and oil. Fats is found in, in animals and oil is found in plants. The fat, fats are, are solid at room temperature, while, while lip oils are liquid at room temperature. Their properties is that they, dissolve in, they do not dissolve in water, but dissolve in organic solvent. Oil, oil is liquid at room temperature, while fats are solid at room temperature. Functions of protein, function of lipids is that they are oxidized to release energy, and the other one is that, instead they are they act as a shock observer in the living organism in parts of the living organism such such as the heart. Enzymes. Enzymes are organic. Uh, they are organic catalysts which are protein in nature. There are two types of enzymes: that's intracellular, which is secreted by the cell and used within the cell, secreting them. The, the other. The other type of enzyme is extracellular, which is secreted by the cell and used outside the cell, re releasing them. There are, methods, there are methods of which enzyme are being named, that is use of drivable naming and the use of suffix, suffix S. The properties of enzymes is that they are, they are enzymes Enzymes are specific. They are sensitive to change in pH and sensitive to change in temperature and re reversibility. Factors affecting temperature, factors affecting the enzymes are the temperature. When they are high, they denature the enzyme, interrupting it from its function. The extreme pH is another factor that affects the enzyme. Extreme pH below its optimum denatures the enzyme. Let me welcome Dorot. Digestion. Digestion is the process by which complex food is broken down into simpler food substances to be absorbed in the ileum. Digestion in the mouth. There are three types of glands in the mouth, submandibular, lingual, and parotid. These glands, these glands open up, the du they have ducts which open to the mouth, and there is passage of saliva which contains mucus, hydrochloric acid, and water. This mucus lubricates the, this lubricates the food, and the water acts as a solvent. Enzyme, enzyme amylase break down the starch into maltose. The, Tang roll the food to the pyrenex into the gut, where it is, there is contraction and relaxation of the gut, which enables the boluses to move in a process of peristalsis. Peristalsis, it, the food go, enters into the stomach through a muscle known as cardiac sphincter. The cardiac sphincter allows the food to the stomach. The presence of the food in the stomach 
enables the secretion of gastrin hormone. Gastrin hormones stimulate the production of gastrin juice. Gastrin juice, gastric juice has hydrochloric acid and enzy enzymes, enzyme and mucus. The mucus pro provide a protective layer in the stomach uh, which helps corrosion of the walls of the stomach. Hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid kills the germs in the, in the food and the renin, renin enzyme break down the caseinogen to casein and pepsin break down proteins to peptidase. The food is, is passed to the duodenum and passed through the pyloric Spinter. The food in the the food in the stomach stimulates the secretion of secretin and cyclostonin, and the secretin secretin stimulates the liver to secrete bile, bile juice and stored in the gall bladder. This the and pancreas to secrete mineral salts. The cyclostonin helps in the in secrete. It causes the gallbladder to secrete bile into the duodenum. The bile contains three salts, two salts, sodium torocholate and sodium glycocholate. It neutralizes the acidic chime in the duodenum. We have in sodium, we have the pancreatic enzymes, which is pancreatic peptidase, lipase, pancreatic amylase, and trypsin. Pancreatic amylase convert the, the remaining starch into, into maltose, and lipase break down the lipids into fatty acid, and glycerol trypsin break down the proteins to peptide. The remaining food is, is passed to the large, large intestines, where it is there, is there is manufacture of amino acids and vitamins. The mineral salt, mineral salts and water is also absorbed. The indigestible and undigested food are passed to the rectum where it is stored temporarily and eventually released as feces. We have the in the ileum we have some adaptation that is it is large to increase the surface area for absorption. It is narrow to allow the contact of the food and the walls of the ileum so as to increase the absorption. It is highly coiled to to slow down the movement of food, thus allow more time for absorption of food. It it also have large number of villi for, to increase the surface area of absorption. It has lacteals which transport the fatty acid and glycerol into the bloodstream. We, we also have, it, the food is assimilated. Assimilation is the incorporation of food into, into the cell metabolism. We have different types of food me metabolism. Amino acid. Amino acid is is oxidized, is synthesized to proteins for growth. We also have glucose, which it is it is oxidized to produce energy for respiration. We have fatty acid, which some of the fatty acid are oxidized to release energy, but most of them are stored under the skin as neutral fats. We go to caecum and appendix. Appendix are functionless in humans, but in herbivores, they are function. There are many bacteria which secrete enzyme cellulase, which break down cellulose to release energy for, for, for use. We have vitamins. We have vitamin, importance of vitamins. We have vitamin A, which is used in the body for vision, and we have vitamin K for blood clotting. clotting. We, have, we also have vitamin D to help in strengthening of bones, formation and strengthening of bones. We also, we go to the function and determination of, determination of energy used in the body. We have um, lactating, gender, sex, Thank you. I welcome Zena.
What is classification? Classification is the grouping of organisms based on characteristics they shared in common. Uh, what is taxonomy? Taxonomy, it is the science of biological, uh, biological classification of organisms. We have five kingdoms, and we have seven taxonomic units, the kingdom being the largest, followed by phylum, and phylum class, order, family, <laughs> genus, and the species. Species is the smallest unit of classification whose members naturally interbreed to produce fertile offspring. We have binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is the scientific double naming of organisms by assigning them two names. That is the generic and the specific name. Rules for binomial nomenclature. It has two names, the generic and the specific. The first letter in the generic name is written in capital letters followed by small letters, while in the species, the specific name, it is written in small letters. It is underlined separately when handwritten and italized when printed. Under kingdom, we have five kingdom, that is kingdom Monera, Protochista, Kingdom Protochista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Plantae, and Animalia. Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Monera. These, for example, bacteria and some algae. General characteristic for Kingdom Monera. That is, they are unicellular or microscopic. They have few cells that are not membrane bone, and also they are prokaryotic, that is their nuclear material is not enclosed. They have cellule made of cellulose. They have cellule, but not made of cellulose, cellulose but instead they are, made of a, they are made up of mucoprotein or murine. Uh, we, they, they move by use of flagella. Under kingdom protochista, we, for example, the plasmodium and paramecium, their general characteristic is that they are eukaryotic, their membrane, their nuclear membrane is enclosed in a, they are, it is in, they are a membrane bound. And they, they have special structures that is contra, contractile vacuoles for osmoregulation. They move by use of pseudopodia, cilia, and flagella, and also they reproduce asexually by use of sporulation, conjunction, or fragmentation, but under specific conditions, they reproduce sexually by use of conjugation. Kingdom fungi, for example, the yeast, mushroom, molds. Their general characteristic is that they are eukaryotic, their nuclear membrane is, their nuclear material is bound, their basic unit is the hypha, and collectively, collectively hypha makes up mycelium. They store food in the cytoplasm in form of oil drops and glycerol. They have neither chloroplast or chlorophyll, hence they feed on already made ma food materials. The, we have harmful, bank, uh, harmful fungi, that is, they are poisonous. This, they can cause death if we eat, for example, if grains are stored when they are not dried, they cause aflatoxins, which are, uh, which are poisonous in our health. Also, there are saprophytes. That is, they cause food decomp they, they cause spoilage of food. food. Um, useful fungi, it is used in brewing industry, to manufacture ethanol. It is used in, as a decomposer, that is they decompose dead organic matter. And also, they are used in baking industry to, and it is used in genetic engineering to manufacture vaccines and medicines. Fungi is also used in, in dairy industry. For example, special fungi has a, has special, it, it produces special flavors 
for example, the yogurt and the cheese, and also the fermented milk. Kingdom Plantai. Kingdom Plantai has two division, sub division. That is the phylum Gymnospermophyta, Gymnospermatophyta, and King phylum Angiospermophyta. Under Gymnospermophyta, gymno, Gymnospermatophyta, it has three classes. That is class Cicadels, class Jingokels, and class Coniferels. Kingdom Plantae, it has two divisions. That is the Gymnospermatophyta and gym, Angiospermophyta. Right, I pick from where she's, she's left. Uh, we have Kingdom uh, Angiospermophyta and gymnospermophyta. Under gymnospermophyta, we have the kingles, we have the coniferales, and we have the cycadels. Under the angiospermophyta, we have the, the, angio, the general characteristic of angiospermophyta is that they are, they are, the, the seeds are enclosed in an ovary, they, which later develop into an ovary. They, they, have fl they are flowering plants. Uh, they are divided into two. That is the they are divided into two. That is the monocotyledonous and the di 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 monocotyledonae and dicotyledonae. The general characteristic of uh, monocotyledonae is that uh, they have a par parallel leaf venation. They have uh, fibrous roots, and they have uh, the floral parts are in are in three or in multiples of three. Then in, uh, under di dicotyledonae, the leaf venation are they, re they have a parallel network ven leaf venation. They have a tap roots, uh, root system. Uh, the floral parts are in four or in multiples of four. Right, we go from uh, kingdom plantae, then we go f right into kingdom uh, animalia. Under kingdom animalia, under kingdom animalia, we have uh, two divisions, that is uh, Philom uh, Arthropoda and Philom Chordata. Under Philom Arthropoda, we have got uh, five classes. That is uh, uh, class Insecta, we have class uh, Arachnida, we have class Chilopoda, we have uh, class Crustacea. Under class Crustacea, the examples of class Crustacea, the organisms found in class Crustacea are uh, the shrimps, the crabs. The general characteristic of the Crustacea is that the head and the thorax is fused to form cephalothorax, often protected by a carapace. Uh, they have a uh, compound eyes, uh, they, they, ha they breathe through gills, we, they have uh, two pairs of antennae. Then we move from the uh, Crustacea, we moved into the arachnida. Arachnida are uh, organisms that, such as um, the spider, the scorpions, the mites. The general characteristic of the arachnida is that the, their body parts are divided into two. That is the, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. They have uh, four pairs of legs. They have uh, eight simple eyes. And um, under, we move from uh, class arachnida, we move to class chilopoda. Class chilopoda are, are organisms such as the centipedes. The centipedes have a poisonous claws that secretes poison that paralyzes the prey, hence they are ca carnivorous. Uh, they also have um, the dosoventrally the, the flattened body. They have one pair of segments, of one pair of leg per segment, and they have up to 15 uh, body, body segmentation. They have one pair of antennae. Uh, we move from the class Chilopoda, we go right to the uh, class Diplopoda. Class Diplopoda are organisms such as the millip millipede. Millipede are organisms that uh, they don't have poisonous claws. Uh, they lack, uh, they have two pairs of walking legs per segment. They have two pairs of antennae. They have, um, they ha their bodies are divided into three body parts. They have the, uh, the head, the thorax, made of uh, four, three, four segments, and have the body trunk. We move from the class Chilopoda, we move to class Insecta. The class Insecta are organisms such as the Sessafly. The Sessafly, uh, the general characteristic of the class Insecta is that they have uh, three body parts, that is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. We have, uh, they have three pairs of legs. They breathe through the tracheal system. We move from uh, class, we move from class uh, Philam Arthropoda, we move straight to the uh, Philam Chordata. Philam Chordata, the general characteristic of the Philam Chordata is that they have uh, a notochord. We move straight to the, the Philam, 
Philam Cordata have a class, five classes, that is um, class mammalia, class pieces, class elves, class Class, class Eves, class Mammalia, class Amphibia, class Reptila. Uh, we, we, cl we start from uh, class Amphibia. Class Amphibia are organisms such as, uh, such as the snakes. The general characteristic of the class uh, Amphibia, no general, the organism, Amphibia are organisms such as the frogs. Uh, the general characteristic of the frogs is that they have a moist skin body because they breathe through the lungs, they break through the the, the skin, they breathe through the gills. Uh, they also have uh, the four pairs of limbs, that is for walking and for swimming in the land. They have an external, they have extern, they, fat, they have a fertilization is external. Then we move from the class uh, amphibia, we move to the class reptilia. Reptilia are organisms that have a dry, their bodies are covered by dry, scaly skin. Uh, the other thing about the class reptilia is that the class reptilia, their fertilization is internal and they are ectothermic. Right from the class reptilia, we move to the class mammalia. Class mammalia are organisms such as uh, animals, human beings. Uh, the general characteristic of human beings is that uh, the human beings, uh, they, are, they have mammary glands, has their name, okay, mammalia. Their bodies are covered with fur and the their bodies are covered with fur and the, the fertilization is internal. Then we move uh, from uh, classification, we're done with classification, we move right to ecology. Welcome on the stage. Ecology. Ecology is the study of interrelationship between living organisms and the environment. The environment is made up of both living and non-living organisms. The study of single species is known as autoecology and study of many species is known as synecology. There are several concepts of ecology which include the biomass. The biomass is the total dry weight in a particular trophic level. Also, we have the habitat. The habitat is a specific locality with set conditions under which an organism lives. We also have the ecological niche. Ecologi ecological niche is a space occupied by an organism in an habitat. We also have the carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the total number of organisms and habitat can comfortably support without depletion of the natural resources. We also have the population. The population is the total number of organisms of different species found at a particular hab habitat at a particular time. A basic concept removed from uh, factors affecting the dispersion of organisms in an ecosystem. We have the biotic factors and abiotic factors. The abiotic factors are examples are light, pH, atmospheric pressure, and salinity. We move right from uh, there are abiotic factors also, that is the predator-prey uh, relationship. We have predator-prey relationship, we have symbiosis, and we have competition. <coughs> Uh, right from there, we move straight to the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle occurs in biologically and non-biologically. It occurs biologically by a free-living bacteria, that is the Clostridium and Azotobacter, and uh, also uh, by, symbio by symbiosis bacteria, that is such as the Rhizobium. Now, the, those bacteria convert the free atmospheric, free nitro nitrogen in the atmosphere into nitrates in plants. Now we move to the non-biological methods of uh, converting uh, nitrogen in the atmosphere into nitrogen in the soil is by use of lightning. During lightning, the lightning energy combines the atmospheric nitrogen with oxygen to form nitrogen 2 oxide. The nitrogen, the nitrogen 2 oxide uh, dissolves in the rainwater to form nitric acid and nitrous acid. The nitrous acid and nitric acid are chemically converted into nitrates. The nitrates are absorbed by plants and synthesize them into plant proteins. The animals take in the plant proteins and synthesize them into animal proteins. Now when these organisms, when these animals die, they leave the energy in form of in organic chemicals. These inorganic chemicals are broken down into simple substances that can be used by other organisms by saprophytic bacteria. The examples of saprophytic bacteria are the fungi and the bacteria. Excess nitrates are converted into free nitrogen in the atmosphere by uh, denitrifying bacteria, that is the Diobacillus denitrificans, and Diobacillus denitrificans and 
pseudomonas denitrificans. Right, we move from, uh, we go straight to the ener energy flow in an ecosystem. Uh, the light energy is converted into chemical energy through photo photosynthesis. The, pri the food, the food into chemical energy, that is the food. The, f the chemical energy is obtained by primary consumers, that is the herbivores. Us, being the secondary consumers, pr con consume, the, consume the, uh, the primary consumers, that is the herbivores. When we die, we are being fed on by, we leave the food in form of inorganic substances, that is the inorganic, inorganic food substances, and that's the birds, organisms such as the vultures, that they are called the tertiary consumers, come and feed or runs. And the energy flow in an ecosystem can be diagrammatically represented through uh, under three forms, that is the using the pyramid of numbers, the pyramid of biomass, and the pyramid of energy. We move from the energy flow into we move from the energy flow into uh, diseases. Now, before diseases, we have the adaptations of uh, various plants into their hab habitats. We have the xerophytes, we have the halophytes, we have the mesophytes, and we have the hydrophytes. The xerophytes are plants growing in dry areas. The various adaptation is that they have uh, they fold their leaves to reduce the surface area exposed for transpiration. They shed their leaves during the dry areas to to reduce the surface area exposed for transpiration. They they have few number of stomata to reduce the stomata exposed for transpiration. They have sunken stomata to accumulate water in the sunken piece to reduce the saturation deficit, hence reduce the rate of transpiration. Some have a reduced life cycle to evade drought, hence uh, exist as underground penetrating organs. We move straight from the xerophytes, we move to the hydrophytes. Hydrophytes are plants growing in aquatic ecosystem. The adaptation of hydrophytes is that they have broad leaves with most of the stomata on the upper sides of the leaf to reduce the surface area exposed from water loss. They have poorly developed roots, that is to, to reduce the amount of water absorbed. They have a sensitive chloroplast to, to that can photosynthesize under low light intensity. We have the halophytes. Halophytes are, organic, are plants growing in a saline environment. Uh, plants, <coughs> Uh, they have uh, they accumulate they have uh, salt glands that uh, secrete excess salt. They have uh, they accumulate water in their in their root cell to increase the osmotic pressure. Hence, it draws water into their cells. Now we move straight from the hydrophytes. We move to hylophytes. We move to mesophytes. Mesophytes are plants growing in relatively adequate water. The adaptation is that they have a. Uh, uh, they have stomata that are equally distributed on both the upper and the lower surface. This is to this is to this is to reduce the amount of to increase the amount of water loss. Uh, they have uh, the, co the 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 climbers that is such as the lioness climb on the 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 tall trees so as to obtain the nutrients and the sunlight. They grow they they grow they grow tall so as to compete for light. Then we move straight into diseases. We have the bacterial diseases, we have the virotic diseases, and they have the protozoan diseases. We have the we start with the bacterial diseases that is the typhoid and the the cholera and the typhoid. Cholera is caused by, the causative agent of cholera is called vibrio cholerae. Cholerae, the signs and symptoms of cholera is a diarrhea, fever, headache. Uh, it can be prevented controlled by proper hygienic conditions and prevented and prevented by amoebocytes. We have uh, that's the, the same case ap applies to the typhoid. Then we move to the protozoan disease that is a amoeba dysentery. Amoebic dysentery is caused by entamoeba histolytica. It can be treated by use of uh, applying administering uh, amoebicides. Moved straight to malaria. Malaria is caused by a plasmodium, but transported by a vector called Anopheles mosquito. Then uh, we move straight there to uh, 
Ascaris lumbricoids. Ascaris lumbricoids cause uh, the adaptation of uh, Ascaris lumbricoids is that they have two hosts, the primary and the secondary host. This is to increase the chances of survival. They have they shed uh, they they have uh, muscular pharynx that to draw water from their from the from the animals from the host's alimentary canal. Uh, they have uh, tissues that are tolerant to low oxygen concentration. We move straight to the to the kistosomiasis. Kistosomiasis have uh, the, the adaptation of kistosomiasis is that they produce in two level forms. That is the saccharii and the radia. They have two. They have two two hosts to increase the chances of survival. They are reproduced in level form. Um, that's the end. The board on the stage. Okay, let's begin with the predation. What is predation? Predation, this is a relationship within the organisms where an organism kills another organism to obtain nutrients. And then under predation, we've got the symbiosis, we've got the parasitism, and we've got the saprophytism. What is parasitism? Parasitism simply means the, where an organism obtains nutrients from another organism without necessarily killing it. Under parasitism, we've got the endoparasites and the ectoparasites. Endoparasites means that where a, where a parasite where a parasite is dwells inside the host. And then ectoparas ectoparasites, this is where a parasite lays on the surface of the host. And then we go to the symbiosis. What is symbiosis? Symbiosis is where organisms mutually benefit from one another. For example, we've got the rhizobium bacteria. The rhizobium bacteria obtains nutrients from the plants. This is the adaptive, this is the, how the rhizobium bacteria simply acquire nutrients. It, the rhizobium bacteria acquire nutrients, the plants acquire nutrients from the rhizobium bacteria, and the rhizobium bacteria acquire shelter and carbohydrates from the plants. And then we've got the saprophytism. The saprophytism is where organisms obtain nutrients from dead, from dead decaying matters, the dead decaying organisms, like the living organisms, the animals and the plants. And then um, let's move to pollution. What is pollution? Pollution means the release of harmful substances or the forms of energy into the surrounding by human activities. And then we've got the pollutants. The pollutants are the substances that are released to the environment that are harmful or hazardous. And then we go to the under pollution, we've got the air pollution, we've got the soil pollution, and we've got the water pollution. Let's begin with the air pollution. What is air pollution? Air pollution simply means the release of substances into the air or the environment that are poisonous or hazardous. And then the causes of air pollution, we've got the sulfur-based chemicals. Under the sulfur-based chemicals, we've got the sulfur peroxide, we've got the sulfur peroxide. Let's deal with the sulfur peroxide. The sulfur peroxide, this is the gas that is produced by the pro food processing industries. It is produced by the manufacturing of sulfuric acid. And then the sulfur peroxide is a gas that combines in the atmosphere and falls down as rainfall. We've got the causes of the sulfur peroxide. The causes of sulfur peroxide are sulfur peroxide, when it falls on the earth, it falls on the soil, it lowers the soil pH, and it causes fall on the crop production. And then we've got the effects of the sulfur peroxide. The effects of sulfur peroxide, these are, uh, it causes bronchitis, it causes pneumonia, it causes heart failure on the living organisms. And then the air, which is the sulfur peroxide, when it is released to the environment, it causes or it clogs the stomata of the plants causing a photo, fall in the photosynthesis. And then we go to the oxides of nitrogen. This is another cause of the air pollution. Oxides of nitrogen, we've got the nitrogen peroxide. The nitrogen peroxide is a gas produced by the motor vehicles in the roads that is released to the atmosphere. It is a poisonous gas that when inhaled, it causes, it causes heart failures or it causes diseases in our respiratory organs. And then in the plants, nitrogen peroxide when released to the atmosphere, when it settles on the leaves of the plants, it clogs the stomata, thus preventing photosynthesis from taking place. And then you've got the smoke and the fumes. The smoke and the fumes, the smoke is released by motor vehicles on the roads. And this smoke, when it is released to the atmosphere, it causes smoke on the roads, thus Okay, for example, the old weather roads. In the old weather roads, when cars pass through the old weather roads, they simply produce a lot of smoke. 
the cast itself produce the smoke and this smoke causes invisibility why it causes irritation in our eyes and then we've got the the lead the lead the lead comes in since the petroleum fuels used in the motor vehicles are lead based they contain a lot of lead and this lead when it is released to the atmosphere and inhaled by human by hum, by human beings it causes it causes a lot of it causes a lot of effects in our respiratory surfaces it causes um, block it blocks our respiratory surfaces like the alve alveoli the liver that's causing a lot of diseases and then when it settles on plants it clogs the stomach and that's preventing photosynthesis from taking place we've got the aerosols aerosols these are the gas or gas produced by the perfumes that we as human beings simply use on our bodies the aerosols remember contain the three gases that is the carbon the lead and the chlorofluorocarbons and in the aerosols we deal with the chlorofluorocarbons the chlorofluorocarbons these are the gas produced by the perfumes that we as human beings use that when released to the end that when we inhale since we the human beings use the chloro use the perfumes that contain the chlorofluorocarbons when we inhale the chlorofluorocarbons it causes effect on our respiratory surfaces and then when it settles on the plants it prevents photosynthesis since it, when it settles on the plants on the surface of the on the leaves it causes a uh, it clogs the stomata. It clogs the the, the gas exchange from taking place. That causes fall in the crop production. And then we go to the so we go to the let's start with the water pollution. What is water pollution? Water pollution means the addition of forms of energy or addition of harmful substances on the water. Let's go to the causes of water pollution. The causes of water pollution. We've got the. Um, Causes of water pollution, we've got the domestic effluents. Domestic effluents, these are the poisonous substances that we as human beings release. Why? This is due to the fact that they are domestic. Domestic means the, the plant, the, we, as, we as living organisms produce these domestic effluents. And these domestic effluents, when they are released and drained to the water bodies, they, it clogs or it prevents oxygen from getting in into the water, thus preventing gaseous exchange taking place in the aquatic plants and the animals. We've got also the industrial effluents. Industrial effluents, these are the effluents released on the harmful substances that are released by the industries that when drained into the water bodies, it prevents the light penetration from getting into the water, thus preventing the gaseous exchange from taking place in the aquatic plants and the animals. We've got the lead. The lead simply comes means the lead comes in due to the petroleum fuels used in the motor vehicles. The lead is poisonous in that when it is released by the vehicles, there is this, there is rain water, that when it, the rain water, the rain water drains, it drains a lot of, since there are gases in the atmosphere and there is rainfall, it comes down with the, okay, it is drained with these gases in the atmosphere, that when drained to the water bodies, it causes, it clogs also, it blocks the respiratory surfaces in the aquatic plants and animals. And then we've got the um, effects of this water pollution. The, when these water pollution are effect, when they are co with these causes, the water pollution, when we as human beings take in this water, it causes the, the remember the water bone diseases, that is the cholera, the bilharzia, and the rest, the diacentries. So these diseases, these diseases are acquired by us, the human beings, that's causing effects in, many, in our respiratory surfaces. And then we go to the soil pollution. The soil pollution, this is the this is the intentionally or accidentally release of substances into the soil. Okay, the causes of soil pollution we've got the inorganic products, inorganic chemicals. Remember the inorganic chemicals. These are like the pesticides, the herbicides that when released or when sprayed into the earth, into the soil when they are drained. Remember they are being the okay like for example the herbicides the herbicides are used on the herbs. These are the plants. Okay, and then when they are used when they are sprayed on the plant. They affect the soil pH, thus causing fall in the soil production, okay? And then we go to the um, another, the soil pollution. The soil pollution, another, another cause is the petroleum products. The petroleum products, remember, contain the lead. The lead is, the lead, 
the lead comes seen due to the petroleum fuels that are used by the motor vehicles that when released to the atmosphere or when released into the soil, these petroleum products, mainly the lead, causes effects on the soil, thus lowering the soil pH and the soil production. Okay, let's have the control of the soil pollution. Discouraging excessive use of agrochemicals. Combustible solid waste should be burned in an incinerator. Encouraging biological control of pests and diseases. Enforcing appropriate legislation on the proper waste management. And use of lead-free petroleum fuels. Thank you so much. Um, we have come to the end of the presentations and I want to congratulate the team. I believe that we will make more comments later, uh, but it's fantastic work done. And straight away, uh, we begin the questions and I will request Mr. Bet to have one of the microphones so that uh, uh, the members from the other side who want to ask questions can ask questions. Now we begin. Uh, you are going to raise your hand and ask your question. Please be ready. Concentrate because we want to do it. We want to do this very quickly. So you raise your hand and you ask your question. Oh, my name is Cherub. Um, Mr. Kamau ought to set up a school near, a, near an industry um, producing or manufacturing sulfuric six acid but is advised by the biologist not to do so. Why? Say the reason why and explain. Thank you so much for that question. Let's have an answer for that. Hope you caught the question right. Okay, the sulfuric six acid, okay? So the sulfuric six acid, the sulfuric six acid, remember the sulfur peroxide comes from the, the production of sulfur peroxide is due to the manufacture of the sulfuric six acid. So when the sulfur, the sulf, the, the sulfur six, the sulfuric six acid, when it is manufactured, it causes the sulfur peroxide. And this sulfur peroxide is poisonous in that in the environment when it combines with the oxygen in the, in the, in the atmosphere, we as human beings take in, take in oxygen, and remember the plants take in carbon peroxide. So this sulfuric, the sulfuric six acid, when it is manufactured, it produces the, sulf the sulfur peroxide, And the sulfur peroxide is poisonous in that it, co it blocks our respiratory surfaces and it causes the plants, in the plants, when it settles on the leaf of the plants, it prevents photosynthesis from taking place since it clogs the stomata. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, correct, incorrect? Correct. Correct, thank you so much. Let's have another next question. Check one, next two. question. Okay, kindly say the difference between photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. Very quickly. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make their own food using from carbon peroxide and water Check. using energy from sunlight, while chemosynthesis is the process by which some bacteria make their own food using energy derived from chemical reactions. Okay, thank you so much. Is this correct? We are coming there. We are coming there. What is the difference between obligate and facultative anaerobes? You got the question? Pardon? Yes, repeat the question. What is the difference between obligate and facultative anaerobes? The difference between uh, obligate and facultative bacteria is that uh, parasites, facultative and uh, obligate and facultative uh, parasites is that Obligate par parasites are dependent strictly on live hosts, while facultative uh, parasites are parasites that depend on either live hosts or uh, dead hosts. Right? Correct. We find out from the person, you need to confirm to us whether you are satisfied with that. Yes? It is correct. Okay, next question. Next question. Next question. Okay, why is it that fungi is not part of the plantae group? 
kingdom planter. Pardon? Why is it that fungi is not part of kingdom planter yet they are plants? You got it? Question? You have said that why kingdom fungi? I said why fungi is not part of kingdom plantae, yet they are still plants. This is because fungi has some similar characteristics, characteristics with animals, like they have cellulose, hence they are placed in, in, a, in a kingdom that is called kingdom mycota, right? Yeah, Correct. my request to the person who asked the question to rise and just give us the question context. You understand? Yes. Okay. Uh, since fungi is is not a plant, neither nor is not a plant nor uh, animal. Like we've seen that uh, it is it is it it's lack photo it is not photosynthetic, and uh, yet it is not uh, again part of any it is not an animal. So the scientists saw that it is better not to place in plants nor animals because it is neither neither of them so they gave it a kingdom called mycotai well thank you identify measures that are directed to in eradication of plasmodium adult mosquito and mosquito larvae uh, mosquito larvae the vaccines are used uh, when vaccines are used, they target certain stages of larvae. They break down. They don't, they don't allow the, the larval forms to develop fully into an adult. Then, uh, right? Yeah, just continue, just continue. Looks like uh, there is confirmation that you are not moving in the right, right direction. Yes. Establishment of fish, fish ponds. Where fish will feed on the mosquito larvae? What is the question you are ask, answering? What is the question? Preventive, measure, uh, prevent, preventive measures or how to destroy the mosquito larvae. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else from the team? Yes. Uh, release of genetically mated mosquito larvae, mos mo genetically mated mosquito to mate with the larvae. Yes, you have gotten the second one, but the first one and the last one. Let's have another member from the member room to ask some the question. Just relax. In eradicating the larvae, we can use um, oil by because the larvae they are deposited on. Let's make an example: water in a plastic. We can use oil to cover up the surface area of the water. Therefore, there will be no oxygen exchange between the water and the air. So the larvae will, be, will, will, will suffocate and then they will not be able to survive. For the grown mosquitoes, we can use, we can use um, um, in our homes, we can apply the use of nets so that we can, we can prevent them from stinging the human beings. For the, the middle or the plasmodium, we can use, we can use um, what you call biological control by bringing in male mosquitoes to mate with the female mosquitoes so that they'll not be able to, they'll, in the process, they'll go lay eggs so that they'll not affect the human beings. Well, thank you. Can we confirm, confirm to us whether we are correct? One. Yes, for can the you, first one. Now, now you give us the question and give us a proper answer for that. What was the question and what is the answer? In prevention and treatment of malaria, uh, identify measurement. Uh, okay, uh, that are uh, directed in eradication of plasm uh, plasmodium, in eradication uh, of adult mosquito and in eradication of mosquito larvae. Okay, for the first one, development of vaccines against plasmodium. The second one, adult mosquito. I can agree with my sister up there. Uh, introduction of uh, 
genetically sterilized male uh, mosquitoes, which mates, thus uh, reducing the number of mosquitoes. For the last one, mosquito larvae, uh, I can use oil or uh, I can introduce fish, for example, in a fish pond where they will uh, feed on the, on the mosquitoes, thus reducing their number. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like someone is not satisfied with what you are saying. I oppose your first answer of using uh, oil. Oil, you are disturbing, you are causing damage to other aquatic organisms because you are reducing the amount of oxygen. You're, you're preventing the aquatic animals from respi respiring. I disagree with the oil, use of oil. So the order of the question, anything to say? <laughs> I've given another um, way of using to uh, prevent or to reduce the number of mosquitoes. Introduction of fish to a fish pond or uh, water where mosquitoes usually uh, breed. I agree with the first one. I was only correcting the, the second one. So are you now in agreement, all of you? Yes. Are you in agreement? Yes. Or anyone with any, anything to say? Yes, please. We, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no, it's a new question. It's a new question. Anyone with a problem with what we are discussing right now? All of us are in agreement with that? Yes, are we? Next question, please. Next question. Two types of food chain. Stage. I thought that is very direct. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, if, 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 if there is. Yes, anyone? Or there is. Yes, anyone? Looks like there is no one who can give an answer, so we will go back to the person who asked the question to s give us an answer and speak more. Question context. We need a question context. They are grazing and then cheetahs. <laughs> yes, question context. In grazing, it involves um, herbivores. It start, um, producers start with um, green plants, while in then it, it involves uh, um, dead, dead decaying matter. It, 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 it involves bacteria. You are getting that? Anyone with something to say? You are okay? Yes? Raise your hand. You want, they want you to speak. Types Just of food chain are dentritas and grazing. In dentritas, it involves dead, dead decaying matter um, that involves bacteria, but in um, grazers, it involves herbivores, but uh, producers start with um, green plants. Is that okay? Yes. If there is any issue, teachers will mention something later. Thank you so much for that, for the question. Uh, thank you for that. Yes, next question, next question, next question. What is the importance of predation? Importance of predation. Um, predation uh, helps to reduce the number of organisms to a current capacity level. Correct. Thank you so much. Next question. Name the region in the human digestive tract where digestion of fats begins. Uh, it begins at the duodenum. Correct. Next question. Next question. Next question. Why is the appendix considered as a vestigial structure? Vestigious. 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 Structure. Uh, the appendix is referred to as a vestigious uh, structure because... What is the meaning of vestigious? Vestigious is that they have no role. They are reduced in size because they, they are functionless. They are reduced in size because they are functionless. They have no role. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Okay, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are referred to as uh, vestigious because they play no role in the whole process of uh, in the alimentary canal. They play no role in digestion. Therefore, they since because they, they play no role, they have become reduced in size. They have become uh, functionless. 
their cysts to become functional because they have no role in digestion. The person who, is, who asked this question, is it correct? Yes. Is correct? Yes. Okay. Do you mind saying something more on the same? Yes. Do you mind saying something more? Say something more on yes. the same? She, she ought to have started by introducing the meaning of vestitials, which means that these are structures that have reduced in size and have ceased functioning. Now that we have considered the, the appendix being, being a vestitial structure, it's because it has reduced in size and it is functionless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next question. Next question. Bryophytes are less advanced compared to pteridophytes. Explain. Do it again. Bryophytes are less advanced to pteridophytes. Explain. You got it? Question? You got a question? This is because in... <laughs> Bryophytes, they have... They lack vascular bundles, while in pteridophytes, they have vascular bundles. And also in, in pteridophytes, they are differentiated, differentiated into stems leaves, but in, in bryophytes, they are thalloid in liver warts. Correct. <laughs> Correct. We know that the, the, that three components of gastric disease, that's um, pepsin, renin, and hydrochloric acid. Where is the hydrochloric acid secreted from? Where the, the, the place where the hydrochloric acid is secreted from? In this tongue. Yes, let's have it from. Yes, an answer. It is secreted in the sacus erectus. No. <laughs> Not true. Not true. Yes, an answer. Gastric gland. Huh? Gastric Pardon. gland. Wrong. It's not correct. Yes. It is secreted on the walls of the stomach. No. Not correct. <laughs> yes. In, oh, now, any... Secreted in the walls of the intestine. Incorrect. So let's have someone from this team to tell us. Yes, let's have you. Tell us. A trial. Gast <laughs> no. Gastrin hormone. Incorrect. Incorrect. Yes. Now... An answer? Goblet cells. Use your microphone. Goblet cells. So we have, lastly then, if no one answers, we will have the person who asked the question to give us the answer. Last one. The last one. It is the oxytin. What is it again? Yes? It is the oxytin. What is that? Say something more on the same. Say something more. Please. Tell us more. Tell us okay. more. Oxytin, it's the cell that, sec the, that secretes HCL in the stomach. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach. It's the same thing you are saying. Well, thank you. Now, next question. Next question. Next question, let's have questions from this side. There are so many questions here. Everyone in this side has questions. Everyone has questions. Everyone has questions. I just hope you are serious. Oh, everyone has a question. Thank you so much. That's Give great. That means you prepared. Yes. Of okay, silence. Cycle. Yes? Give Give me one advantage and one disadvantage of nitrogen cycle. We need an answer. Pardon? <laughs> one advantage and one disadvantage of nitrogen cycle. Okay. The disadvantage is, comes about when the uh, non-biological methods of converting nitrogen uh, into, ni into nitrates, that's the light energy converts the light uh, nitrogen Combine the nitrogen and oxygen into nitrogen 2 oxide. Nitrogen 2 oxide uh, 
dissolves in the rainwater to form nitric acid. This nitric acid, the, when it falls on the crops, it, it, it reduces the soil pH, affecting the production, uh, crop production. Advantages comes about when it provides the nitrates for plants. For nitrates are responsible for growth in plants, and also they are obtained by uh, organisms for indirectly from plants by feeding on them. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Next question. There are so many questions here. Okay, give me... Give me two reasons why it is hard to eradicate malaria. We need an answer? Uh, it is hard to eradicate malaria because one, uh, there is extreme warm temperatures that provide a suitable, uh, and, and a, a suitable conditions for the growth of levi. Another one is that there is a large, uh, there is large reserve of uh, the levi in, in other hosts such as the monkeys. In uh, there, another reason is that there is a conflict uh, in region. There is regional conflicts uh, regarding the coordinated uh, programs. It becomes difficult to eradicate because of the regional conflicts in the coordinated uh, programs. Very correct. What are those conflicts? What are those conflicts? For those example? conflicts are, uh, take for example, I'm supposed to obtain some uh, medicine from US outside the country, and we are not in good, uh, we're not in good terms. The countries are not in good terms. It becomes difficult in terms of communication. So I subtain those. Thank questions. you so much for that. So next question, next question. What is the reason why the primary productivity in an aquatic system decreases with depth? <laughs> this is because as you increase in depth, the light intensity decreases, hence decreasing the rate of photosynthesis. And also, decrease in depth decreases the um, temperatures, which also decreases the rate of photosynthesis. Correct. Stay two muscles that are found in alimentary canal. Pyloric sphincter and cardiac sphincter. Incorrect. That is well. OK. Uh, you say the, the, the two types of mus nini. muscles that are found in alimentary canal. They are longitudinal and circular muscles. Correct. Thank you. Next question. Explain why there are no grass or rather less grass in a dense forest. This is because in a dense forest the trees grow tall and it will cut off the supply of light. And as we all know, light is a necessity for photosynthesis and the grass will not get enough light. Correct, incorrect. Correct. Ac acidity of the chime can impair the digestive process in the duodena. duodenum. Explain. <laughs> Yes, we need an answer for that. This is because uh, the acid, it, duodenum, the enzymes found in duodenum, found works well under alkaline medium. Uh, the acidic medium will alter now the digestion of. Correct. Give a reason why two species in an ecosystem cannot oc occupy the same niche. <laughs> answer for that. Because the two species in an ecosystem needs to feed on the same type of the food substance, the nutrients, uh, ex nitro the oxygen, the mates, and the space. Hence, it causes competition. Incorrect. Correct. <laughs> Give me two ways in which one can determine the diet of an animal in an ecosystem. An answer? You consider the dentition of the animal and also the, di the, digestive, the digestive system of the organism. Correct. Uh, the if question, there are more reasons, if there are more reasons. The question was, yes. uh, give ways in which one can determine uh, the diet of an animal in an ecosystem. One, she said by examining the digestion, 
system of an animal that was correct and the dentition uh, the dentition of an animal like beaks in birds thank you okay next question explain how explain how oaks indirectly acquire energy from the sun explain how oaks hawks indirectly acquire energy from the sun The, yes, you got it? Yeah. So the question was how hawks acquire energy indirectly from the sun. So plants acquire energy from the sun through photosynthesis. Um, herbivores feed on the plants. Carnivores, no, herb, the hawks feed on uh, mice, like, substances like. Yeah, so they acquire the, en the energy indirectly by feeding on the her herbivorous, which fed on the plants. Is it correct? Yes? I'm not satisfied. <laughs> not satisfied? Yes. Another fashion? Plants will take in light through the process of photosynthesis. The, the primary consumers will consume the plants. The secondary consumers will also consume the primary consumers. And since hawks are tertiary consumers, when they Secondary consumers die, the hawks will feed on them and s obtaining it indirectly. Are you satisfied? Yes. Can you speak your mind? <laughs> so plants plants acquire plants acquire energy. They use light for photosynthesis and they make food and when they make food Though they are, the prim they are the producers, and the producers are eaten by the primary consumers, and the primary consumers are eaten by the secondary consumers, then the tertiary eats the secondary consumers, and then the hawks, which are the tertiary, uh, eat the secondary consumers. That's the, thus, they acquire energy indirectly from the sun. Thank you. Why is it sometimes enzyme renin and pepsin are released in their inactive form? You got it? She's, she has a good answer for that. This, this is because the, the pepsin and the renin corrode parts, of, mm, parts the, that are producing them. Corrodes the walls that are producing them. Correct. She just read it last night. She just read it last night. Yes, correct. Correct. Are you sure? Okay, let's have another another answer. Another question. Please give it to them. Just ask the question first. Role of bacteria in the colon. Yes? The role of bacteria in the colon. Role of bacteria in the colon. Answer for that. Yes? They, they secrete cellul cellulose, cellulose, which is used to digest the cellulose. Correct. Correct? You are sure? Yes, next question. We have zebra, wild beasts, and gazelles in the same habitat. They feed on grass, and yet there is no competition. Give me the reason why there is no competition of food. She has an answer for that. She has an answer for that. Because uh, zebra, the, the three uh, animals occupy different ecological niches. Incorrect. That is not the answer, yes. Because the zebras will feed on the soft side of the, of, the, of the shoots of the grass, and then the wild beasts will feed on the, the rest part of the grass. Is it correct? Correct. No, can you speak, speak, speak it well? Just give us the correct answer, precise. Zebra will, f will feed on the... Zebra will feed on the uh, smooth shoot... Uh, will feed on the shoot of the grass, then wild beasts, then the gazelles will feed on the remnants of the grass. Oh, something is not happening here. I explained to you what you've explained is ecological niche. They occupy 
feeding on grass is different ecological niche. Feeding on that's what's ecological niche is the position in the habitat in which organisms live, right? What you're explaining is ecological niche. I use what? What do you have to say? You have nothing to say. <laughs> you must have something to say, definitely. You are, you are really given up. So thank you. Sawa? Yes. Okay. Name, name, name three classes of, name three classes whose members possess, whose members are poi, poikilothermic. You got the question? You got it. Name three classes whose members are poikilothermic. An answer, we need an answer for that? The insecta, chiplopoda, and diplopoda. Incorrect. Incorrect. Let's have another one to try. Yes. Quickly. Um, Eves. Um, incorrect. Amphib you are not sure? Anyone else? Then the question goes back to the membrane. Yes. Reptilia. Mamma Mammalia. Incorrect. She doesn't agree with you. So let's have another person from the team here. Anyone? Anyone to give us an answer? Yes? Answer. 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 An answer? Yes. There are so many of them there. Class amphibia, reptilia, and pieces. Correct, incorrect. One correct. One question from the form force, only one, then then we give a chance. One question, just one question. Yes, please, please ask the question. Re relax. Mm. Give me the reason why deforestation is considered pollution. Deforestation. Yes. Is considered as pollution. Why is it considered that way? An answer? Deforestation is considered as a soil pollutant. Why? Because deforest no, first and foremost, deforestation is a air pollutant. Why? When the trees are cut down, when the trees are cut down, remember, remember the old weather roads? The old weather roads produce a lot of dust, okay? And this dust affect our respiratory surface, the respiratory surfaces, okay? And when this dust settles on the leaves of the plants, it clogs the stomata, thus preventing photosynthesis from taking place. Thank you. Are you satisfied with that? Not Where is the person who asked the question? No. Not satisfied. And the way you try to speak very well. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Let's have an answer, another fashion. Pardon the question. Do the question again. Yes. The reason why deforestation is considered pollution. Pollution. Yes, a poll environmental pollution. Uh, deforest deforestation is uh, considered as a pollution because uh, once Deforestation is uh, considered as a, a pollutant because it reduces deforestation reduces the rainfall, rain, 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 rainfall. Okay, deforestation is considered as a air pollutant because it reduces the amount of uh, uh, oxides in the atmosphere. It reduces the aeration of the waste produced into the air. Incorrect. Yes. Incorrect. Incorrect. I guess it's incorrect. Let's have. La yes, last one. Last one. First, deforestation is the cutting down of trees. So, in the process of cutting down trees, it causes noise pollution in the environment. <laughs> <laughs> just noise, just noise, just noise. Okay. Well, thank you. When the soil. When the. 
When the trees are cut, they cause soil erosion, which leads to <coughs> which leads to draining of soil particles, causing silt in water bodies, causing water pollution. Incorrect. Lastly, let's have a, a, is it correct? Let's have an answer from the author of the question, please. Let's have an answer from the person who asked the question. The answer is that when trees are cut, see the ratio of CO2 increase because trees take in CO2. So the, when the ratio of CO2 increase, it will, it will cause global warming. I see. I see. <laughs> Incorrect. Someone is saying does not agree with that. Yes. Oh, question. Just give her, just give her, no. Just give her. Oh. Okay, give him, give her, give her, give her. Okay, that's okay. I, yes, please. <laughs> you know, yes. So, ask the question very quickly. A researcher introduced, um, brought 20, 20 black mice and 20 white mice, oh, sorry, mice into an ecosystem. And later, when he came back, he found you are asking these people who are here, please look at them. <laughs> just, no, just face the direction. Face the direction. Oh, sorry. So, I the question. So, a researcher brought or introduced 20 black mice and 20 white mice into an ecos ecosystem. And later, he came back and found 14 black mice and 4 white mice. Why? Is that mathematics or chemistry, biology? I'll explain in terms of the, the increase in the white mice and the reduce in the black mice. Have I, is, the question, is that the question? I, is that the question? The, the number of whites are high. The number of whites are high. The number of blacks are high. Whites are low. Uh, the, the black mice, they they applied what is called the camouflaging. This uh, helps to, to reduce the, the, the identifi identification from the predators. The white mice, they are of shouting colors compared to the, maybe their environment. Therefore, they'll be preyed on by predators more. That's, that's the reason for their reducing number. While the, the, the more camouflaged the black mice are high in number. Yes, correct, but yes, yes, correct, but yeah, I'm satisfied. But let me add something to my sister. You would have said the white are easily noticed. Thank you. <laughs> Just as simple as that. Name the species. Name the species of Plasmodium. A question, an answer. Species of Plasmodium. <laughs> yes, can I have an answer from you? Yes. Um, falsipara. Correct. Yes. Yes. There are four. Give us more. Let me add. We have the plasmodium okay. falsiparum. We have the plasmodium ovel, and we have the plasmodium vivax. And we also have the Plasmodium malariae. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of our Socratic conference for biology. And I want to take this time to thank everyone for the very wonderful presentation that has happened. And uh, at this moment, we want to allow our teachers to make comments about what has happened. We may correct students who made some mistakes. Congratulate the students for the work that they have done and maybe say, make any, I mean, we listen to the teacher speak. So I would uh, take the microphone back to our teachers. Maybe I should take it to who? Yes, the biology team. I want to invite them to speak. Maybe, Madam Deputy, now again, you can lead us in, in this so that you can allow uh, the teacher.
teachers to make their contributions. Can we clap for the teachers as they come? They have been here all this time listening to us. It's been it's an honor to have you teachers here. Thank you, madam. Good evening. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm expecting, um, I'm sure for the girls who are there during chemistry time and the teachers who are there during the chemistry time, you must say that uh, this was, was the most interactive time. <laughs> on top of that, on, on top of that, I think you call them me. The members, may I use the time members? Because there is a time being used. Um, I think they did well. As much as the presenters did their best, in my own creating, I saw the members doing wonders. <laughs> even the form threes, even the form threes who don't know how to frame the questions, I'm sure at the end of the day, next time when they come, they will know the question and the answer. That is rule number one and the, uh, the most important one. I don't have my to, to make the comments. I thought Madam Janet was there to say, but on behalf of the, uh, instead of Madam Janet, may I invite um, Dominique, and from there other teachers can comment. I must appreciate Kip Tom. I must appreciate, yes. So, we are inviting, we are inviting Kip Tom next time to come for biology practical. And when you will be having our second section in chemistry, give talk, kindly stay up to the end like today. Thank you, God bless. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, our deputy and our teachers, the guests and uh, the students, we are so much glad for this uh, wonderful session. Let me first of all take this time to congratulate the team that is leading us here. Can we give them a round of applause? We are so much happy. We are to represent Vizuri. Oh, they have represented us very well. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have really made us proud. Now there are some of the, some few areas which uh, I noted down that I uh, thought maybe we can rectify. Maybe some of the teachers also have some other areas. The first area is when, when the presenter is talking, what do we do? One of the rules we keep? Pass. Now, there was one point where they were talking about the roles of uh, the lipids. Act as a shock absorber. We have all been acting, is it? If you act like the deputy, are you the deputy? No. You will only be showing only the characters that you have seen, is it? But not playing that role. So we don't say, act as a shock absorber. We say what? Absorb, shock. There was also another one on uh, the food chains. We normally have two types of food chains. What we call crazing food chain from craze. Begins from grass or green plants. We also have another type of food chain, which is called the tree tars food chain. D-E-T-R-I-T-U-S, the tree tars food chain. That is a food chain which begins from a decomposer. It begins from a decomposer, and mostly these are food chains which are found in aquatic environment, like phytoplanktonic uh, 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 algae, for instance, feeding on maybe a dead, decaying carcass. That phytoplankton is eaten by a small fish. The small fish is eaten by a large fish. You realize it is not beginning from a producer. 
That is called a detritus food chain. We also add another one on the control of a mosquito larva. Mosquito larva. Use of genetically modified sterile males. These are males that can not be able to produce the male gametes. They are sterile. So that when they uh, mate with the, the female mosquitoes, there will be no eggs laid. The eggs laid will not be fa fertile and therefore controls the population of mosquitoes. But now we were talking about the larva itself. I thought maybe if we are to control the larva, can we introduce a male sterile mosquito? The larva itself now can be either biologically by use of fish or by use of oil, which we discuss in length. Also, it can be by use of chemicals, chemicals like uh, CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, the sprays that contain CFCs or DDTs. Those are chemicals that can be used to control, to kill the larvae. Otherwise, also uh, genetically modified mosquito, male mosquitoes can also be able to control the same. There was a case where we were talking about kingdom angiosperma fighter. Did you hear that? Yes. So kingdom is kingdom animalia, kingdom plantae, kingdom monera, kingdom fungi, and kingdom protoctista. When we come to angiosperma fighter, here again. Oh, sorry. Which one is that one? Subdivision. Subdivision and not kingdom. There was also another one which we were discussing in length. And we were missing some information. When we were talking about the kayakam is not functional. Isn't it functional in a cow? We talk about kayakam is non-functional in human. Why are we saying kayakam is non-functional, yet we have one which is functional? We are getting, so we say the kayakam in humans is non-functional. Same case with the appendix. This is because they don't have the bacteria that is in symbiotic relationship with the host, producing enzyme cellulose which breaks down cellulose into glucose. I think so, those are some of the, oh, one more is on lead poisoning, which is led to the atmosphere washed into a river body. And then clocking the respiratory surface. If it gets into a river body, then it will be in form of ions. We have gone out to chemistry, ions. Lead poisoning, when absorbed into an organism, will be able to affect mental development in animals. If we go in depth and then look at it in terms of chemistry, there is a topic in form four which we are looking at that is transmission of nerve impulses in the neurojunction, where chloride ions, sodium ions, potassium ions, and the likes are involved. Now, chloride ions. Lead, it react now. When lead reacts with chloride ions in chemistry, what do we form? Lead chloride, which will now interfere with the ions, thereby affecting the mental de development. So it affects the mental development. Anyway, nonetheless, there is a, a colleague, Amos, Marcy, well done. Also keep talk and also comment. <laughs> Any person who wish to comment? Now, we don't have, uh, we have volunteerism here, so, so let's not have uh, the masses <laughs> demand. One pass? Okay, sir.
Good evening. <laughs> Deputy principal, our guest, our teachers, our presenters, and our students. Uh, this evening, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate our presenters. Eh? I want us to appreciate them. <laughs> we can do better than that. Eh? As Sunday Now, as you have heard, they have explained what they were explaining very well. Others, they are using odd uh, concept. That's why some of us, we are, we are saying it is incorrect. And yet, somebody has, has chosen a very, or a very simple concept. Maybe has on, she has only explained using one term like fletching and you, you are saying <laughs> incorrect. Huh? <laughs> so when you are asking your question, make sure you have uh, read and you have explained the terms that you can use to answer that question. Just like that question that someone asked that uh, a researcher introduces 20, 20? Yes. Yeah, the one which are black and I want to guess that that person was a form three, huh? I want to guess that. If you, are, if you are a form four, then it means you have not done uh, evolution. Eh? <laughs> so if it is form three, then we accept that. But if it is form four, <laughs> that one, you are supposed to go back to evolution and then you, you read more. Otherwise, I want to appreciate the presenters. They have done well. They have explained the question that you have asked very well. But when also you are asking a question, eh? Uh, do, not, do not discourage them by saying incorrect or it is wrong. Huh? Because maybe, just like a question, there was a question that one of us asked about the deforestation. Huh? How can it cause pollution? Now that one, it is, a, it is a, an open question. It is not only requiring one answer. Huh? Yeah, it can cause noise pollution, can cause water pollution and even air pollution. So when they are answering, then can you also think outside the, the answer that you have so that you will not be discouraging them? And yet they have tried. Yeah. Yeah, so we are supposed to be encouraging them. Eh? Otherwise, thank you so much for your cooperation. I want to believe that this one, because it was the first conference in biology, I want to believe if we will be having next, those topics that we will be given, uh, let us read more, and then I will. I, I believe that we will improve in biology. Asante ni sana, mungo abarik. Thank you so much. Okay, Deputy Principal, my fellow teachers, our uh, guests, and the presenters. I would like to take this opportunity to thank God up to this far where we have reached. I want to join my colleagues to congratulate our team, our able presenters. Um, as I was sitting, I taught um, in a, a, a super school, which is not the IC, <laughs> the way they present, yes? Um, even some of the questions uh, we were as teachers, some of us were about to research on some question you gave us. So that means you are ahead of us again. Thank you so much. Um, I make some comments uh, when you are presenting, majorly, like uh, the use of wrong examples. I did observe uh, in uh, especially in classification two, where you are giving us. Uh, the class, like for instance, some of these presenters did say, uh, class ambivians, and they give us an example saying the snake. <laughs> yes? Do you have that being a, an ambivian? <laughs> no, that is not an ambivian. Uh, also, by the use of a wrong example, uh, they say we read cholera using a site. Do we use a site? You give wrong example too. Uh, you are uh, you, to a point, so you don't use those examples. In case you don't have 
an example, the correct example, you use appropriate term. Like say, you treat using appropriate chemical. Um, in question answering, uh, some of you did say, uh, why is uh, funky not a plan? You could have given us an example of a funky because a funky is a kingdom, yes? But you are comparing a funky, a kingdom with a, a plan. That is very wrong. You could have given us an example of a funky with the plan so that you compare an example with an example. Don't compare a kingdom with an example with an example. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, we wish also to uh, congratulate the Form 3s. Uh, although you did so, they give us, they, they, it's like they don't have uh, the joint statement. They said some questions which are not uh, making sense. But uh, we appreciate them also because they joined us and we, we were able to catch up and learn together. Otherwise, thank you so much. Uh, have a blessed evening. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, from the presentation, uh, the onset of this Socratic conference, we had some rules. Is that okay? And, and there is one particular one that was very loud and clear. That when we are doing the presentation here, the rest of us should remain so when I say you should remain silent, you say, shh. Is that okay? The rest of us should remain silent. Correct. Now, there is an impact on that when you remain silent. Even when you're not reading, you're adding a grade just by keeping quiet. That is how people pass by not even reading. I want you sometimes, you go to class and remain silent. Do you know what happens? What happens is you guys begin meditating and rethinking exactly what you've been learning during the day. Just by relaxing, you're creating a conducive environment. Some of the presenters here were talking about, you know, creating some conducive environment for mosquito to breed. Is that okay? You also need to do that. Away from that, I just want to join your teachers to really give a round of applause to these presenters. Thank you very much. They have done a wonderful job. Is that okay? Number one, the level of uh, content retention was very high. They could remember so many things that they read. Is that okay? Do you believe that? It has to begin from this conference moving forward. And it has to begin by a class. That is the Form 4s followed by the Form 3s, good people back there. I love you because you came to support these people. Without them, you cannot make that nine point. So this is the class that we are watching. When we achieve 9.4 plus, the Form 3 will give us 10. Hello? So we want you, and listen and listen good, Girls, we want you to work together, Form 3s and Form 4s. So thank you very much for that. Now, there was a good, um, uh, they were audible enough. Thank you very much. You guys were audible enough. There was only one thing. One lady or one presenter was dominant in terms of answering questions. That is not us as Kadoria. Are you getting that? We give equals opportunities to the rest of them. Eh? Because we want an A from you, an A from you, an A from you, an A from everyone. And that can be only achieved if we give ourselves equal chances. Yes. So another thing, the weakness that we want to eradicate is that, uh, and Mwalimo mentioned about the examples. There were those wrong examples, yes. I'm not an expert. But... I wanted to hear more examples. So there was less examples. And when you see a class that is giving less examples, it means content mastery is wanting. Munelewa yo. Kama wezi peana beyond the normal examples ambazo ziko kwa kitabu. Because they are common. 
some of the question they give you the common example and they ask you to add more sini kweli in the statement ya question they add something that you know kama ni frog mnataja taja they add that frog there unabaki bila example unashika kichwa is that okay so when you're reading and you want to master content and you want to understand go beyond and when you go beyond you will always appreciate how these people will be answering questions na mwalimu alisema is that okay another thing biology has a lot of terms when i was coming in and i saw you guys very quiet reading in class i knew today i'm going home with a lot of information and new terms that comes from biology but i got a few so it is one thing i want you to get use of those terms is that okay use them vile mwalimu alisema is that okay know their meaning is that okay and know their spelling may god bless you so much 9.4